Hi, hello, and 안녕하세요. My name is Lee, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'll be reviewing and discussing the South Korean LGBT film, Hello My Love. Okay, before I jump into the usual spiel, I have to be very frank with you. This film is beyond ratings. It is beyond good or bad. It is an experience. You've either watched Hello My Love, which most people haven't, or you've continued to live your life in blissful ignorance. Or if you're really unlucky, you've lived the movie. By that I mean if you are a queer, non-cisgender, or gender non-conforming, basically any orientation or identity intersect that is not cis or heteronormative, there are some scenes, lines, and reactions plucked right from our unified experiences. In this movie, hello my love, the straights will try you, they will test you, they will trespass against you, and the tribulations are fierce. So here's what we're gonna do, y'all. We're gonna tick some boxes, kind of quick, and then I'm gonna give a real brief spoiler-free response followed by a deep dive. I couldn't possibly convey how chaotic this movie is in its highly compacted 95-minute runtime unless I walk you through it. Let's go. In short, Hello My Love is a comedy drama following Ho Jung, a popular radio DJ preparing to welcome her boyfriend of 10 years, Won Jae, back from his studies abroad in France. However, when he brings back another man named Dong Ha, relationships and loyalties are turned upside down. The film premiered, seemingly, at the 10th Jeonju International Film Festival in May 2009. It was then released to very limited theaters on October that same year, where it racked up 10,783 admissions and grossed $62,848. I couldn't find any mainstream critics reviews, and the sample size for audience responses is extraordinarily small. The majority are middling to low ratings. Speaking to bare facts, Hello My Love is a competent production and well acted. The cinematography and editing are nothing to write home about. There are some odd devices, voiceover, soliloquy, breaking the fourth wall, etc. that do not really integrate well. The plot shifts about every 20 minutes, it's entirely unpredictable. The first 50 minutes are maybe the hardest I've had to endure, giving bungee jumping of their own, method, and rainbow eyes a run for their money in terms of both triggering content and strenuous watchability. The film has some sensuality, but if I had to provide trigger warnings, Hello My Love does feature homophobic bullying, forced outing, emotional abuse, religious conversion therapy, sexual harassment, and slut shaming. Are you sold on it yet? Ho Jung, the protagonist, does some very reprehensible things during the first or so acts, and there were multiple times I had to walk away and didn't think I could finish this. If you're queer, ever dealt with closeting and outing, the anxiety and fear, the invalidation, the first half is very difficult to watch. I paused, it felt, for my own survival. Every line was like a blow, and each minute it got harder and harder to watch. So if this sounds like an endorsement or condemnation, that's up to you, dear viewer. But you may ask, what exactly happens in this film? Well, I'm going to try to tell you, but y'all, I ain't Mike's Mike. I don't have the skill to construct an insane wall of photos with complex string dynamics, and I don't want a copyright claim, but I will make an attempt. Hello My Love begins as many films do, Introducing the protagonist. Our heroine is named Ho Jung, and she's a co-host of a radio show that talks about romance and relationships. Consequently, we open on one of her segments, where she is advising a woman that if her boyfriend is shy and not taking the sexual initiative, that she should just drug him. She claims this will be successful because she did this herself. I remind you, this is the opening scene. The first scene. It sets the tone of the world and the character of our lead. And already within a few minutes, it has placed you in a complete moral tailspin as the protagonist seems to encourage male rape. But you don't even have time to process this, so moving on. Ho Jung's co-host, Jin Young, also her senior, warns her that she could get in trouble for this advice. But no worries, because their boss loves her sensationalist style. A real bona fide shock shot. She even gets a promotion due to her high ratings, which are quickly outgrowing that of Jin Young. Outside of her burgeoning radio career, Ho Jung grew up an orphan, is approaching 30, and is waiting for her boyfriend Won Jae to return from studying abroad in France so she can get married. The evening before he is set to return, Ho Jung accidentally starts a messenger conversation with Won Jae's roommate, but he quickly logs out when she states that she's Won Jae's girlfriend. 
The next day, Ho Jung waxes poetic to a mother, calling in after the woman recently came out as gay to her husband. Ho Jung pleads for love and understanding for this woman, as issues of secrecy, deception, and disclosure plague the discussion. Later, taking out a photo book, Ho Jung reminisces on her ideal romance with Won Jae, whom she started dating back in high school, and he promised to propose to her when he returned. Ho Jung goes to pick up Won Jae at the airport, only to be surprised that he brought someone along with him, a man named Dong Hwa. While studying the culinary arts in Paris, Won Jae became friends with Dong Hwa, a sommelier, or a wine expert, basically. Immediately, tension brews between Dong Hwa and Ho Jung, the latter finding the former too attractive. The trio drives to Won Jae's family home. As Dong Hwa lapses in proper Korean social etiquette, Won Jae's grandfather voices his disapproval of the effects of studying abroad. As Dong Hwa is staying at Won Jae's house, both reassure his parents that sleeping together in a small bed is no worry for them. Won Jae then lets Ho Jung know that he has important news for her, but will tell her later. Ho Jung offers to bring Dong Hwa on her show to talk about wine in connection with romance. Ho Jung's next radio segment deals with a woman marrying a man for wealth. Jin Young is the more pragmatic of the two, and Ho Jung teases her for her unmarried status. But not all is as it seems. Ho Jung has found herself lying to Won Jae's mom for two years, claiming that he has always called her and sent her gifts when in reality he was often distant and inattentive. She states that she worked so he would marry her. However, rather suddenly, Ho Jung's boss confesses that he likes her and wants to start a relationship with her. Out of shock or perhaps fear of losing her job, Ho Jung doesn't reject him outright. Upon Won Jae's return, he intends to open a restaurant with Dong Hwa, but his mother scolds him for putting more work into his new business than with his fiance. Ho Jung ponders what a proper proposal looks like. She invites Won Jae over, she sets up a romantic dinner, puts on perfume, dons some lingerie, but unbeknownst to her, Won Jae has brought Dong Hwa along for the date, the latter of whom becomes uncomfortable at the sight of the couple. They get drunk. The next day, Ho Jung's boss again asks her out and starts to make it more implicit about her job. He offers to help her in her career. Again, instead of rejecting him, Ho Jung lies and claims she wants to have a strong professional standing before dating him. She also, unexpectedly and for the only time in the film, breaks the fourth wall and talks directly to the viewer. And then, the bombshell. Ho Jung goes to Won Jae's not yet open restaurant one rainy day. He's been ignoring her phone calls, and when she arrives, French music is wafting through the building. There, she sees Won Jae and Dong Hwa dancing intimately, and then kissing. This is the only time in the film where the gay characters are allowed a moment of warmth and happiness. It's all downhill from here. Ho Jung is obviously shocked, and unintentionally makes a noise, drawing attention to the couple that they are not alone. Won Jae chases her through the rain to attempt to explain. Ho Jung decides to sit down with both men to hear them out. Trigger warning. If you've ever been mocked, insulted, or invalidated by a straight person, particularly someone close to you, for your sexual identity, this scene will hurt. A lot. Ho Jung is essentially in denial, calling Won Jae sick, wrong, and crazy. She asks how Won Jae can possibly consider what he has with Dong Hwa love. Won Jae admits that he was confused about his sexuality, but no longer wanted to run and hide from it. He begs Ho Jung for understanding. She walks home in the rain and spends the next several days being overwhelmed by her emotions, including while at work and on the phone with callers. In another turn of fantasy, she spends the day imagining and projecting her emotions onto the world around her. For example, she sits at a movie theater and fantasizes about Won Jae and Dong Hwa kissing, but it is projected on the big screen. Ho Jung is taking the revelation very personally, thinking that it's some form of punishment. She spends her nights and weekends distraught, drunken, and almost catatonic. When a friend eventually comes to visit her and she shares this news, the friend talks about how she's always dreamt of sleeping with a gay guy. This may be either to prove her own desirability or with the thought that she could turn him? Yet again, the film leaves you with little time to process how crazy this statement is, so moving on. In another fantasy sequence, Ho Jung starts to become suspicious of all same-sex interactions between men. She sits outside, and suddenly every male-male encounter in her mind is loaded with homoerotic potential. Men talking, men playing basketball… it all becomes hypersexualized in her imagination. Won Jae goes to see Ho Jung and cooks for her. Although she's still seething, Won Jae tries to apologize again and tells her that he's always appreciated her being there for him, like family, and that he hoped that she would understand him more than anyone. She laments this personal betrayal and kicks him out. Amidst the drama, Won Jae is still working on opening his restaurant. His mother is very proud of him and has come to like Dong Hwa, so much so that she even wishes she had a daughter to set him up with. 
Paul Jung taunts Dong Hua that he'll never be the family's daughter-in-law. Later that evening, the three sit down to talk again. Ho Jung asserts that she has the right to win Won Jae back because his homosexuality is a surefire sign that his life is falling apart. So she proposes to be allowed to date Won Jae for one month, or she'll out him to his mom. This is clearly a threat. Won Jae is completely floored by this extortive proposition, to which she responds that her behavior is his fault, that he has made her act this cruel. Now stay with me, viewer. This is real. This is what is happening in this motion picture. This is the heroine of the film, and it doesn't get better. The three proceed to get drunk. Won Jae passes out. Ho Jung tells Dong Hwa that he should try having sex with a woman, that he just hasn't met the right girl yet. She then kisses him and attempts to force herself on him. Then despite all of this, the two have consensual sex, with Won Jae drunk in the room. The next day, Ho Jung is shocked at what she has done. She shames Dong Hwa for sleeping with her despite loving Won Jae, which he rightly throws back in her face. The two never speak of the incident again, it never comes up back again in the plot moving on. Ho Jung does end up having Dong Hwa on her show to recommend wines for dates. Then, when she goes on her date with Won Jae, dressed in sexy, she brings some wine that Dong Hwa has recommended to her, only to find out that it's the couple's favorite wine. On this date, they visit their old high school and reminisce. She invites him up to her place, but he turns her down to return to Dong Hwa. This is the first inkling to Ho Jung that she might need to let Won Jae go. Sometime later, Ho Jung goes to the zoo and finds out that some animals can be in same-sex relationships. There are indeed gay animals in nature. Won Jae speaks with her again, apologizes, and tells her that Dong Hwa helped him realize his sexuality, but admits being back in Korea, and subsequently around his family and back in the closet, has made him confused again. Ho Jung still loves him and doesn't want to let him go. The throuple spend the day together, specifically the day of Ho Jung's parents' memorial. They drink, go to the beach, and swim together. At work, Ho Jung is going through some changes. She again teases her co-host, Jin Young, for being a golden miss, which is basically a spinster. Jin Young then suddenly announces that she's leaving the show because she's engaged. Specifically, she's engaged to a person she met 10 years ago when she was a student living abroad in France, so she's leaving Korea to be with this person. She accepts that Ho Jung is expected to replace her. Meanwhile, Ho Jung's boss is jealous, thinking there's something going on between her and Dong Hwa. This leads us to the opening of Won Jae and Dong Hwa's new restaurant called Adonis. You know, the handsome youth of Greek mythology beloved by both men and women. Then, at said opening party, Ho Jung's boss makes one final pass at her. He asks to go on vacation with her, then tries to give her couples rings. Mind you, they've never dated. In response, Ho Jung finally declines him, revealing she has a boyfriend. He assumes this to be Dong Hwa until she introduces Won Jae to him. He then accuses her of using him and manipulating him. Then, out of completely nowhere, a white French man crashes the party. Turns out he's Dong Hwa's ex, and he flew to Korea to try to win him back. Dong Hwa immediately rejects him. This is done rather abruptly in the mode of a silent movie. This French dude then accidentally outs both Dong Hwa and Won Jae to an eavesdropping intern, who then tells Ho Jung's boss. The boss then proceeds to get on stage in front of the whole party, including Won Jae's family, and out the throuple using homophobic language about promiscuity, filth, and disease. Then a fight breaks out, and Won Jae gets hit on the head with a bottle. With Won Jae at the hospital for treatment, his mother begs Ho Jung to save her son, implicitly from his homosexuality. The next day, Ho Jung returns to work, where her boss first ignores her, then reiterates his speech from the party in front of the entire workplace, then adds on some slut-shaming for good measure. Suddenly, we hear drums, and when I tell you I knew in my heart exactly what that meant, I mean it. Time for a small tangent on conversion therapy. Conversion therapy, very basically, is any form of treatment or psychotherapy which aims to change a person's sexual orientation or to suppress a person's gender identity. It is based on an assumption that being lesbian, gay, bi, or trans is a mental illness that can be cured. This extends to perceived elements of the body or soul, as well as of the mind. Methods can vary, depending on the origins of the program, providing this torturous treatment, such as what country it's in, or if it's ran by a religious organization. So again, when I heard those drums, I pleaded out loud, please don't be an exorcism. Please tell me he's not getting an exorcism. And there Won Jae was, on his knees in front of a shaman, getting an exorcism to cure his homosexuality. As of this recording, conversion therapy is still legal in Korea, and this can take on many forms. From the more clinical institutional mode to spiritual practices that blend Christianity with indigenous shamanism. 
Homosexuality, in this case, is a disease of the soul, of malevolent spirits or demons possessing or influencing a person. Hence the exorcism. Back to the film. Donghua goes to the airport and returns to France. Ho Jung either quits her job or is fired. Won Jae, desperate, asks Ho Jung for a favor, to marry him to please his mom. She agrees, but when trying on wedding dresses, realizes it doesn't feel as joyous as she'd hoped. Over the radio, she hears her former co-host Jin Young come out as a lesbian. It turns out she met her fiancé 10 years ago in France, but was afraid to come out, so she returned to Korea. However, she never forgot her and is leaving Korea to be with her. When Ho Jung comes home to find Won Jae crying over Dong Hwa's things and listening to French music, she finally decides to let him go and drives him to the airport. We then flash forward an unknown amount of time. Ho Jung has since been married and is currently getting a divorce. She runs an advice show from her home through the internet, kind of proto-streamer. By chance, she sees Dong Hwa again in a wine shop. He's there with his French ex, and assumedly it did not work out with Won Jae. Ho Jung and Dong Hwa visit Won Jae, specifically for his grandfather's funeral. It begins to rain, and Won Jae suddenly disappears. Going to look for him, Dong Hwa and Ho Jung find him at the beach, where they sit, drink wine together, and comfort the grieving Won Jae. In the end, they support and cheer one another up. Fin. Honestly, I don't know where this film falls. There's plenty of criticism to be leveled at the centering of a straight character, as though coming out is about the heads or whatever your interpretation may be of Dong Hwa's cheating. Personally, I don't want to play into bi erasure, so invalidating those scenes isn't exactly helpful either. The most succinct descriptors I could use is that this film is messy, complicated, rough, and painful. This is its strength. There could be arguments to be made for portrayals of bisexuality, polyamory, unconventional dynamics, or the fluidity of relationships. Perhaps realism in showing the process for a heterosexual person coming to terms with the sexuality of their significant other. Now, I'm in no way letting Ho Jung off the hook. She does and says awful things in this film. Regardless, she has her own viable drama in this story. There's the pressure put on women to marry before a certain age, hence why she projects those anxieties onto Jin Young. That and the psychological impact of being an orphan may be a source of her unhealthy attachment to Won Jae the idealized past and unlikely future she's romanticized in her mind. She is also being sexually harassed at work by her superior. Video essayist James Somerton has this really interesting section in his piece on Our Flag Means Death, on the narratives around coming out later in life, the effect that that has on, say, a wife, husband, boyfriend, or girlfriend. Wonjae does cheat on her, and despite how insulting and heinous the things she says and threatens, I can't even say Ho Jung's reaction is an exaggerated or dishonest representation. What she says are common responses that straight people have and queer people internalize. In many of the films I've talked about on this channel, homophobia and compulsory heterosexuality creates scenarios where people don't come out or into themselves until later in life, and now have to extricate themselves from pre-existing relationships. But, Hello My Love's Chaos is also its weakness. The queer characters are not the leads, and their stories, which sound real interesting, are off-screen and in the past, so not much interiority there. What I would have given to see how Dong Hwa and Won Jae met in Paris, a chef and a wine expert, one out and the other closeted? In the most romantic city on earth, plenty of self-discovery to be found. There is a solitary moment of intimacy that warmed my heart, but that is not what this movie is about. Everything goes by 90 miles per hour like a highlight reel or a studio cut. Someone commented on one of my earlier videos asking if a film had a happy or a sad ending. From my reviews, I'm not sure if it comes through how rare a happy ending is. At worst, you get death. Just above that is alone and miserable. And just above that is alone but trying to move on with your life. Pleasure, yes, but inevitably cut down by pain. But Hello My Love cuts that even further down to the bone, then points the character at the straight lead for a reaction. From the queer perspective, it is only pain. But this pain is not false, it's not mocked, it's not reveled in. It is messy and complicated and rough. Nevertheless, just because a film with queer people is painful does not make it realistic. It just means people's perception of the queer experience cannot expand past that pain, portraying and dominating it again and again. 
Hello My Love cannot be found on mainstream streaming services, but if you look for it, and at your own risk, you'll probably find it. Regardless, I've also listed some great charitable organizations down below that aid the LGBT community in the US, in Korea, and abroad. Because something should come out of this movie. Until next time, goodbye, farewell, and 안녕히 계세요.